Welcome back to the video course on fluid mechanics. In the last lecture, we were discussing about the Navier-Stokes equations and its exact solutions. So, we have seen various cases wherever exact solutions are possible, but as we can see only few cases wherever lot of simplifications are possible, the problem is so simple, domain is so simple and a number of assumptions like um, say parallel flow like that we can put forward then only we can get an exact solutions. So, but most of the field problems wherever we try to solve real field problems, then you can see that this kinds of assumptions if we put then the problem becomes so simplified and then we will not get the results what we expect. So, generally this kinds of the analytical solutions just whatever the analytical solutions we discussed say most of the field problems we cannot directly apply. So, we have to solve the navier stokes equation with the continuity equations in its full form and then uh, we have to get the various parameters like velocity, pressure, uh, vorticity or other kinds of parameters. So, to do this, uh, so we have to, we do not have any shortcut, we have to uh, solve the navier stokes equation say uh, approximate uh, methods or numerical methods. So, with the uh, advent of the various computer technologies and uh, advancement in uh, say um, various numerical methodologies. Now, we are uh, able to solve this um, navier stokes equations and then try to get solutions for various field problems. So, here today we will discuss the various numerical solutions for the navier stokes equations and then we will discuss uh, the uh, various methodologies, numerical methods used briefly and then uh, say we will see how the applications of Navier-Stokes equation with respect to the numerical methods. So, the Navier-Stokes equation the numerical solution. So, here only few analytical solutions are available and approximate solutions we have to go for approximate solutions. So, as I mentioned high speed digital computers have helped a lot in this kinds of developments of say called uh, computational fluid dynamics. So, so, here what we are generally doing is the partial differential equations which uh, say the Navier Stokes equation which we are seen in uh, three dimensions or two dimensions are partial differential equations. So, what we are trying through by using the numerical methods we are trying to replace this partial differential equations by a set of algebraic equations. So, once this transformation is done, then we can apply the boundary conditions into the system of equations and then we can get the numerical solutions. So, as we are trying to solve the complete Navier-Stokes equation this way, by the, that means by using the numerical methods, then this numerical solutions we can apply for the most of the field problems. So, here the computational method solution by approximate method. So, we are providing an approximate method it may not be 100 percent right. So, various numerical methods are used. Say for example, when we consider the flow past a cylinder like this you can see that um, to the we cannot approximate this kind of problem we have to solve the real Navier Stokes equation and then we have to obtain the various parameters like velocity and then we can represent it visually like this animate it or we can represent in terms of graphical or other tabular forms. So, a wider class of mathematical formulations are possible. So, we have already seen the Navier-Stokes equation three different forms like a primitive variables, then we have seen the velocity water city formulation and water city stream function formulation. So, depending upon the kinds of the problem, depending upon the type of the problem which we are trying to solve, we can formulate the problem uh, mathematically and then we can solve uh, using the numerical solutions. So, this branch of fluid mechanics called computation fluid dynamics, the Navier-Stokes equation are solved using the numerical methods and then we try to solve the real field problem. So, now say commonly in literature a number of numerical methods are available, but uh, generally uh, you can see that um, we use for numerical methods like finite difference method, finite volume method, finite element method and boundary element method. So, these are the commonly used uh, numerical methods same called uh, finite element method, 
finite difference method, finite volume methods and uh, boundary and method. So, each method has its own advantage and its own say disadvantages like uh, various uh, difficulties. So, the method say depending upon the problem, depending upon what kind of problem we, we are trying to solve, we can use any of this finite difference method or finite time method or finite volume method or boundary element method and then we can try to approximate the nebulous stokes equation and then try to solve. So, the selection of the methodology depends upon the say type of problem which we have to solve and then say the familiarity of the user say using this methodology and then uh, the availability of the kind of computers which is required for the say typical like boundary method it we have to solve a large system of equation. So, that kinds of methodology may need a slightly advanced computer. So, like that so depending upon the user and depending upon the problem uh, we can choose any of this methodology. So, for say for example, if you want to simulate what happens say here you can see that uh, we want to see this is a, a cube we want to see the flow behavior or flow surrounding a cube. So, what we are trying to do is uh, we will choose a one of this methodology and then we can discretize this domain say, say for example, here this is the domain. So, we can uh, discretize the domain and then we can say approximate the, the Navier-Stokes equations and then as we have already seen the partial differential equations will be transformed into algebraic set of equations uh, and then we will be applying the boundary condition. Say for example, uh, the boundary condition can be say in this figure what is entering from here say if we know the velocity at this location and here we will be having a no slip condition and then here what are the conditions. So, based upon the boundary conditions we will be solving the problem. So, now say we will be briefly discussing all these numerical methods like finite difference method, finite volume method, finite time method and boundary method very briefly since um, only I want to discuss here is only say what is the methodology and uh, which way we are trying to solve the problem. So, but otherwise uh, each of the methodology say to describe or to explain to all the level it will be very difficult. So, here we will be discussing briefly. So, first one is the finite difference method. So, in finite difference methods the continuous variation of the function. So, represented by a set of values at points on a grid of intersecting lines. So, what we are doing in a finite difference method say for let us consider say the flow in a square cavity like this as we have seen this is a typical problem in 2D. So, what we are uh, say in finite difference what we do if this is the uh, boundary, boundary is here gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4 and domain this is the domain. So, what we do in finite difference method is we will be representing this domain with respect to a with respect to a grid points. So, here we can say just discretize the domain to grids square or rectangular grids like this and then say we will be representing the domain with respect to grid points. So, these are all the grid points here and then say so if this is x direction, this is y direction. So, we can represent each grid point and then what we are doing the so the continuous variation of the function. So, the function can be the velocity or whatever the function we are trying to approximate. We will be representing the functions by a set of values at points on a grid of intersecting lines. So, you can see that a grid of intersecting lines here and then the gradient of the function say here if phi is the function which we try to approximate here then we will be having the gradient like del phi by del x or del phi by del y. So, the gradient of the function is represented by the difference between say the differences in the values at neighboring points. So, you can see that say between this point and this point we will be trying to represent between the neighboring points. So, that is the way we represent in the final difference method. So, between these two points we take or between these two points to represent the del phi by del y. So, like this we represent the gradient of function represented by difference in the values at neighboring points and uh, we form finally, a uh, final difference equation is formed. So, finally, uh, after representing say after writing the equations say each grid point uh, we can write the equations and uh, finally, we are representing the 
partial differential equation say in this case the Navier Stokes equation and the continuity equation will be representing in terms of difference equation. So, we form the difference equation uh, and at the grid points this equation is used to form a set of simultaneous equations. So, we have various grid points as explained here. So, this equation is used to form a set of simultaneous equation and finally, it gives a value of the function at a point in terms of the values at nearby points. So, once a set of the we form the difference equations and then uh, we will be knowing the boundary conditions or at least a few grid points we will be knowing the values. So, with respect to the known values, we will be trying to find out the uh, unknown values between the at a, an unknown values at a point in terms of the values at the nearby point. So, this is the procedure used in finite difference method. So, we obtain the value of the function at a point in terms of value at nearby points. So, if there is any specific case at the edges of the grid value of the function is fixed or a special form of finite difference equation can be used to get gradient of the function. So, depending upon the problem say at uh, some places we have to say what we discussed here is only the basic of the fundamental which way the finite difference method is working. So, you know, there is lot of a uh, number of variants of finite difference are available in literature. Then uh, also the variation with respect to space, with respect to time, there are number of methodologies for the finite difference method available. So, the essentially uh, what we are doing here is as we have already discussed between two grid points, we see the uh, difference say the gradient and then we try to approximate the governing equation say here navier stokes equation and uh, then write that difference equation and then solve the difference equation with respect to the known values or the boundary conditions. So, this is the final difference method. Then another important methodology used in computational fluid dynamics is the finite volume method. So, here say finite volume method you can see that a large number of CFD codes are nowadays written using finite volume methods since uh, it has got a uh, number of advantages. So, uh, this um, finite volume methods are particularly applicable to irregular and unstructured grids. So, we have seen that finite difference method generally uh, say we use a square or a rectangle type uh, grid. So, uh, wherever irregular shape comes or unstructured grids, it will be more difficult to deal. So, um, a finite volume method has advantages over finite difference method to deal with the irregular or unstructured grid. So, if you consider the finite volume method for a generic conservation equation like this, say del of rho u j phi by del x j del by is equal to del by del x x j gamma del phi by del x j plus q phi. So, here phi is the function, u is the velocity vector, rho is the density and q is the source sourcing. So, for the, let us consider typical equation like this. So, by using the finite volume method, so here um, we consider the uh, individual cells like this and um, so it can be regular cell structure like this rectangle or, or square or we can have any shape of the uh, cell. And then the finite volume method the domain is discretized and then as a set of nodes and grid cells. So, you can see that uh, the nodes can be on the intersection or it can be at the middle. So, here we will assume the grid nodes are located at the grid cell centers. So, this is not the only option other way also it is possible. So, then compared to the finite difference method the starting point for finite volume method is an integral form of the conservation equation. So, the conservation equation which uh, uh, can be we will write in the integral form like this integral with respect to the say with uh, s with respect to s rho uh, phi v dot n d s in is equal to integral s gamma gradient phi dot n d s plus integral omega q phi d omega. So, we write the equation like this which we have already considered. So, we are integrating with respect to the cell which we consider. So, here uh, we will assume that the density velocity common sourcing terms are known and uh, the uh, unknown is phi. So, then uh, we can obtain the solution the net flux through the phases of the control volume via convection and via diffusion. If it is required we can write integral as f d s is sigma k integral s k f d s. So, we can integrate throughout the various cells. So, we can obtain the surface integrals are calculated in terms of nodal values of f. So, this is the a brief procedure as far as finite volume method is concerned. So, here compared to the finite difference method as we have discussed earlier, say if you consider the Navier Stokes equations and then uh, 
and uh, any kind of uh, irregular domain we can use the finite volume method and then um, so here basically we discretize the domain into cells and then uh, we consider the grid point either at the center or at the intersection of the grid and then we can we approximate the equation as we have already discussed and then we integrate with respect to the cell to get a solution. So, this is the briefly very briefly if you say finite volume method works like this. So, uh, we can use we can approximate Navier-Stokes equation using the finite volume method and then we can try to solve for uh, various problems. So, this is the finite volume method and then another important methodology used uh, is called finite element method. So, here the region of interest is divided in a much more flexible way and uh, the nodes at which value of the function is found have to lie on a flexible mesh and the boundary conditions are handled in a more convenient manner. Uh, there are number of approaches in finite element method. So, uh, some of the commonly used methodologies are direct approach, variational principle or a weighted residual method to approximate the governing differential equation. So, for example, if you consider the problem which we considered earlier like uh, the square cavity problem. So, using the Navier-Stokes equation if you want to solve say let us consider a cavity like this and then if u is equal to 1 here v is equal to 0. So, here u v is equal to 0, u v equal to 0, u v equal to 0. So, if this is the problem then what we do here this compared to the finite difference method this is much more flexible in finite term method. So, what we can do we can discretize the domain say let us instead of rectangles or squares we can use triangle elements uh, like this also and uh, so the advantage here is it is much more methodology is much more flexible compared to the uh, finite difference different kinds of elements like uh, say we can have a uh, triangles or we can uh, have a um, uh, rectangle or square or we can have a um, same quadrilateral like this. So, here this is called an element and uh, say we define here the nodes. So, these are called uh, nodes and um, here various shapes of elements are possible. So, the advantage here compared to any other numerical method. So, here we can have different shapes of elements and so we can easily deal with um, any kind of irregular domain and then say we can fit the domain with uh, an exact very accurate mesh compared to the grids which we used in final difference method and then say after the the meshing is over then the we will be say um, defining an interpolation function the variation like the velocity or the parameters which we consider say in a best stokes equation the either the velocity or pressure then we will be approximating this um, functions of uh, the or the parameters velocities and pressure with respect to uh, an interpolation function and then we will be trying to approximate the function with respect to the interpolation function and then we will be putting back to the say the Gavin equation and then we will try to say orthogonalize it say for example, so one of the methodology the Galliard infinite method we try to orthogonalize with respect to the interpolation function or the shape function and then we force the error to 0. So, since um, say we are approximating uh, with respect to the interpolation function solution will not be exact. So, we are trying to force the error the the residue produced to 0. So, that the error is vanished and then we will get an approximate solution. So, as discussed in finite tunnel method there are number of methodologies uh, like a direct approach. Say for example, when we try to solve say a network of pipes there we can directly use the Darcy's is back equation to get a relation between various pipe elements. So, that kind of problem we can solve using the direct approach and uh, then another important uh, methodology is called variational principle. So, variational principle generally say we, we have to 
derive a function variation function for the Gaussian equation which we consider and then we are trying to approximate. So, this variation principle generally we use for structural mechanics problem and then another important methodology is the weighted residual method. So, they are say we are approximating with respect to the interpolation function and then we are trying to while approximating a residue will be say due to error the residue will be made and that residue will be forced to 0. So, that is what we generally use the method of weighted residual approach say one of the commonly used methodologies Galeorkian approach. So, like this different methodologies are there in finite tunnel method. So, say for example, here if you consider say the say in this domain uh, there is a cylinder and you, if you want to see that how the movement of, the, of a sphere inside the cylinder. So, what we can do is we can discretize using say in three dimensions we can discretize the domain like this and then we can solve the Navier-Stokes equation in three dimensional. So, that say we can initially transform the, the partial differential equation Navier-Stokes equation into uh, algebraic set of equations and then we can apply the boundary conditions and to we can solve those system equation to get the unknowns. So, this is the essential principle behind the uh, finite tunnel method. So, this finite tunnel method is also very much same lot due to its advantages number of advantages are there compared to the finite difference method. So, finite tunnel method is also very commonly used to solve um, various fluid flow problems by using the Navier-Stokes equations. And then uh, lastly uh, another say methodology recently developed recently means about 20, uh, say in the 1970s it was the methodology the development of this methodology has been started it is called a boundary element method. So, here in boundary element method the partial differential equations. So, here the partial differential equation means the Navier-Stokes equations describing the domain is transformed into an integral equation relating only to the boundary values. So, here the boundary element method is based on the Green's integral theorem. So, if you go to the advanced mathematical test we can see that Green's theorem like Green's first theorem, Green's second identity theorems are there. So, here the Green's theorems are used to uh, transform the equation which is on the domain to the boundary. So, here we discretize the boundary uh, instead of the domain and then if you want to find out the parameters on the once we can discretize the domain and uh, say solve for the you will get the equation in terms of the boundary integral and then we can say for example, we can find out the unknowns initially on the boundary and then we can find out the unknowns on the on the domain. So, here say for example, in boundary and method if this is the domain which we are dealing. So, we will be discretizing like this if using various nodes and elements and then if you want to find out the. So, this is called a node and this is called a element. So, once we find say for this particular problem say if we if the say the velocity here is known and uh, some other proportions the velocities are not known then we can find out first on the boundary and then various internal points we can define separately after the boundary internal equations are written and then we can solve for the unknowns on the inside the domain. So, this is internal nodes. So, the advantage here is so, since we are trying to solve initially on the boundary, so the computational dimensions of the problem will be reduced by 1. So, due to this a 3 dimensional problem we can solve in 2 dimensions and a 2 dimensional problem computationally we can solve in 1 dimension. So, that this is one of the advantage of this methodology, but it has got its own limitation also since here to solve the, the, uh, the partial differential equation then we have to look for a fundamental solution uh, in the boundary element method. So, to derive a fundamental solution it is very difficult for the complicated equations and like uh, Navier-Stokes equations, but uh, now recently there are some other methodologies like uh, dual reciprocity boundary element method has been developed. So, we can still approximate the Gaussian equation with respect to some other methodologies like a dual reciprocity method. So, this is the essential of the boundary element method. So, here say as I mentioned 
uh, say if, the, if you want to solve a flow through a dam then you, we will be discretizing like this then you can see the elements 1, 2, 3 like that the elements and nodes we will put and then we will try to solve. So, so as far as fluid flow problems are concerned it is ideally BEM is ideally suited to the solution of many 2 and 3 dimensional problems especially potential flow problems. It was solve the full nebulous stokes equation this methodology has got some limitations, but uh, the advanced techniques like dual reciprocity method can be used, but otherwise the methodology BEM is much more used for to solve potential flow problems. So, in comparison, so while using finite difference method, finite volume or finite element method or boundary element method, we generally model say like say for example, if you consider the flow through dam like this, then this finite difference discretization is shown here, finite corresponding finite element discretization is shown here and boundary element discretization is shown here. So, as I mentioned, so depending upon the problem, depending upon the familiarity of the user with the methodology, then we can choose the methodology and then we can try to solve. Uh, so, in by in using in a, say any of this numerical method, so there are essentially three steps. First one is the pre-processing. So, here pre-processing means first we will be discretizing the domain main by putting the grids or mesh like this and then we will be putting the boundary conditions and then various parameters which are generally available before start say for the problem considered. And then processing means second step is the processing, processing means the computer code which we will be writing for the methodology, then we have to run the code to generate the solution for the for the particular problem and then third step is the post processing. So, post processing means once the results are generated we will be getting numbers that numbers we have to put it in the graphical forms or the tabular form. So, that the other people can understand which way the solution has has been generated and how the results are. So, essentially we have three steps one is pre-processing, second one is processing and third one is post-processing. So, that is about the numerical methods to solve the nebulous stokes equation for say various problems by using different methodologies. So, before closing this chapter, we will be discussing two more um, say typical problem where uh, analytical solutions or we, where we can approximate the nebulous stokes equation and then trying to get uh, analytical solution. First one is the uh, creeping flows. So, actually the second one also which we are discussing is the round water flow that is also we can classify as a creeping flow uh, as a subsection of this creeping flow. So, here creeping flow uh, means it is the flow is extremely slow motion of the fluid in a prescribed geometry. So, here generally the Reynolds number will be very low. So, it will be generally less than 1 and um, so here you can see this is the flow in a domain say the lava flow from a volcano. So, you can see that the, the viscosity is so high and then the motion will be so slow and then you can see that the, we can classify this kinds of flow as creeping flow. So, here the spatial acceleration times in a nebulous stokes equation we can neglect since the Reynolds number is very low less than 1. So, if you neglect the spatial acceleration times and then we get a simplified form of the nebulous stokes equation. So, generally we can represent the for creeping flows we can represent the equation as del p is equal to mu del square u where p is the pressure mu is the coefficient of dynamic viscosity u is the velocity. So, here when the inertial forces are neglected generally the solutions are valued for approximately for Reynolds number less than 1 and the nebulous stokes equation reduced to this form uh, and then this form of the nebulous stokes equation and the continuity equation we will be using for the solution of this kinds of creeping flow problems. So, as we have discussed the flow is in slow motion due to the high viscosity or depending upon various other conditions or situation the flow is in the velocity is very low slow motion. And uh, here uh, if we use the stream function instead of um, terms of head or the velocity equations will be similar if stream function psi is introduced. So, we can represent u is equal to del psi by del y and v is equal to del psi by del x like this and then uh, we can rewrite the governing equations starting from the nebulous stokes equation and then after rewriting we can say trying to solve the, the problems of the uh, like what we discussed in the case of creeping flows. So, a number of problems can be solved in this category 
of creeping flows. It's a variety of practical problems like um, motion of particulate matter in liquids and gases. Say, just like um, say when um, say if you consider reservoir, the sediments will be trying to will be settling uh, since the water is stored. So the settlement of sediments we can consider as a very slow motion and then um, try to get a solution for this kinds of problem or the dust particle, the settlement of dust particles in the atmosphere or the mist, the simulation of mist in the atmosphere or say like uh, bubbles and drops in chemical reactors or flow of molten metals, all these problems comes under the category of the creeping flows. So, also as I mentioned this ground water flow and uh, lubrication um, uh, problems also we can classify as a section of the creeping flow, we can approximate as a, a creeping flow. So, these are some of the applications of the creeping flows. So, here we will consider two cases, one is the Stokes flow and the second one is the ground water flow. So, first case is Stokes flow. So, here say by using this creep flow theory. Uh, Stokes try to solve by first starting from the Navier Stokes equation, he approximated the uh, Navier Stokes equation in, in the simplified form, and then uh, he got a solution by end of the 19th century itself. So, here Stokes flow deals with the uniform motion of a sphere through a large expanse of viscous fluid at small Reynolds number. So, Stokes flow deals with uh, say, as I mentioned, uh, this can be used uh, in the case of sediment settlement in reservoir or while dealing with the dust particle in atmosphere, we can use this theory Stokes flow theory. So, um, this solution has been derived by Stokes by end of the 19th century and uh, the flow is at low Reynolds number. So, here you can see we consider the as a single particle as a say as a sphere here and then this shows the streamlines and uh, velocity vectors are also indicated. So, Stokes considered the, the motion of a sphere through a large expanse of viscous fluid at Small's Reynolds number. So, while deriving the solution, he put forward a number of assumptions, so that the problem will be simpler and then he got a solution for the problem. So, here the assumptions used are the inertia forces on the fluid particles are small and may be neglected in comparison to the viscous force. Then second assumption is walls of the vessel containing the fluid element is not here. So, it is so that um, the effect of the walls are not there when we when we deal with uh, uh, when he derived the equations. And then also some other assumption like no slip between the fluid and the boundary of the space. And then uh, he also assumed that the sphere which we considered is rigid and uh, to derive a solution he used only a single sphere. So, these are some of the assumptions used by Stokes to derive this solution called a Stokes solution. So, here if you consider the force resisting the motion of the sphere that is the drag on the sphere, Stokes obtains the drag force F d is equal to 3 pi mu into V into d. Here we should note that Reynolds number what uh, Stokes assumed is less than 0.1. So, where V is the velocity of the sphere related to, to the uh, undisturbed fluid and mu is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid and d is the diameter of, of the sphere. So, Stokes derived the drag force is equal to 3 pi mu into V into d. So, for the fall of relatively small bodies through the fluids of relatively high viscosity like uh, the dust particle mist droplets in the atmosphere and the settlement of silt in reservoir etcetera. Same we can consider say for example, if you consider the for a small solid particle falling through the fluid, uh, it will accelerate until the net downward force on it is 0. So, if you consider say as I mentioned either dust particle or the sediment particle in the reservoir, so the it will be keep on falling until the net downward force on it is 0 and then we can use this the drag force derived by the stocks and um, when the submerged weight of the particle is equal to the drag force F d, it will reach to the steady state of its motion 
So, Stokes wrote the equation like this submerged weight is equal to resisting force. So, here if we consider a single sphere of diameter d, we can write pi d q by 6 into gamma s minus gamma is equal to 3 pi mu v into t, where gamma s is the specific weight of the solid and gamma is the specific weight of the fluid. So, from which we can get the terminal velocity that means when the submerged weight of the particle is equal to the drag force it will reach a steady state of its motion that velocity is the terminal velocity. So, Stoke got the terminal velocity as V is equal to d square by 18 mu into gamma s minus gamma. So, this solution is called a Stokes solution or Stokes law. So, uh, this has got application in number of fields as I mentioned like uh, say reservoir sedimentation or say dust particle analysis and atmosphere number of applications we can use this Stokes law. So, this has been derived by Stokes in uh, 19th century. So, he approximated here also we can see that he approximated the nearest Stokes equation and uh, simplified the equations uh, uh, such that uh, the very low Reynolds number problem we can apply as derived by the Stokes. So, finally, an expression for drag can be written as drag d is equal to C d into pi r square into 1 by 2 rho v square, where r is the radius of the, the sphere which we consider. So, coefficient of drag from this expression, coefficient of drag has been derived by Stokes as C d is equal to 24 by r e, where r is the Reynolds number with uh, Reynolds number r is equal to v d by nu, where v is the velocity, d is the diameter, nu is the kinematic coefficient of viscosity and uh, d is the diameter of the sphere. So, like this we can get the coefficient of drag and uh, then later Osin tried to solve this again approximated. He obtained an improvement of Stokes solution by considering some of the initial terms in the Nevis Stokes equation and he got the coefficient of drag as 24 by R e uh, into 1 plus 3 by 16 R e where R e is the Reynolds number. So, Osin tried to improve the Stokes law or Stokes equations. Uh, so, here as we have seen the this problem has got number of application. Um, so, uh, say, uh, but it is a simplified uh, form of the Nebus Stokes equation and then Stokes derived the equations. So, depending upon the problem we can say uh, for, for the particular case which we consider we can use this uh, Stokes law uh, whenever the Reynolds number is very low and uh, then the say uh, to determine the terminal velocity for the fluid particle which we consider. So, the second problem which we want to discuss here is the flow through porous medium. The porous medium consists of so pores between some particular phase in the control volume. So, th this is another important section of the uh, fluid mechanics called uh, ground water flow and um, uh, contaminant transport problem. So, here say if you consider say if you have got a domain like this and then if there are number of particles like this, then we can we will be say we can consider the Navier Stokes equation for this kinds of flow problem and then here also you can uh, say see that the velocity will be so low. So, that we can uh, approximate the uh, say the flow is coming like this and uh, going through this and then you can see that uh, due to the the flow is taking through the pores only and then on the particles like a sand particle then it will, the velocity will be much lower through the indices of the pores. So, um, or of the medium. So, the uh, here we can use the Navier's Stokes equation and approximate as creeping flow and then we can use the equation. So, here uh, we can approximate it and uh, so generally say the basic equation for porous media flow is the Darcy's law. So, uh, here what we are trying to do is say the whatever the theory for the laminar flow through pipe we can try to apply for this kinds of problem. So, you can see that whenever we consider a medium like this here between the, the sand grains you can see that there is say the flow is taking place like this. The So, the flow will be going like this at the through the different pores. So, what we do here try to do is same we try to uh, 
approximate this problem as a pipe flow that means between the the solids uh, we consider same pipe flow and then we compare with the Darcy's we try to obtain the Darcy's law from this theory. So, Darcy's has done this experiment through um, the porous media and he has derived and he has shown that the velocity of flow is proportional to the hydraulic gradient. So, here the, the Darcy's law is the basis for the study of this porous media flow. So, it has got the number of applications like you flow ground water flow flow of gases and polymers through porous structures etcetera number of applications are there. So, here first uh, we are trying to correlate with respect to the laminar equations which you derived for pipe with respect to this typical porous media flow. So, the Darcy's law as I mentioned it states that velocity of flow through the porous media is directly proportional to the hydraulic gradient of the media. So, mathematically we can write uh, V is proportional to I or y, where I is the hydraulic gradient or we can write V is equal to uh, K into I where K is known as coefficient of permeability, K is called coefficient of permeability. So, here if you consider the porous media which we are discussing as a simple case of pipe flow uh, equation which we have derived for laminar case. So, we have already seen earlier P 1 minus P 2 is equal to 32 mu U L by d square, so where mu is the coefficient dynamic viscosity, u is the average velocity through the pipe, l is the length of the pipe, d is the diameter and p 1 is the pressure at section 1 and p 2 is the pressure at section 2. So, this we can write as this is p 1 minus p 2 is equal to k into mu into u l by d square. So, if we assume what is happening is between the uh, solid grains or the sand grains, if you consider the, the flow taking place, the porous media flow as a Similarly, as a pipe flow. So, we can consider the relation of flow through porous media with a characteristic length as grain diameter of the porous media. So, here we consider this L the characteristic length as the grain diameter of the porous media. So, considering the porous material in a tube of area A and let the flow takes place under the piezometer head difference H f is equal to H 1 minus H 2 and the velocity u is equal to average velocity u is equal to flow q divided by area A. So, then we can put in this relationship as the actual flow area. So, here we are trying to uh, what we are trying to use is we are trying to correlate with respect to the pipe flow equation and the porous media flow. So, uh, but uh, the porous media flow is concerned you can see that uh, since here you can see uh, there is number of pores and then say sand grains are there between the pores only in the flow is taking place. So, actual area will be reduced. So, we can write the actual area actual flow area we can write as A into uh, if A is the cross sectional area. So, A into E where E is the porosity of the media E is the porosity which is the ratio volume of pores to the total volume. So, E is defined as the porosity of the media. So, the actual area is A into E. So, that we can write hence actual mean velocity is equal to Q by A into E q by a e. So, that is equal to q by a is u. So, u by e. So, the whatever we consider the mean velocity is u. So, that has been we have to divide it by e the porosity. So, that actual mean velocity is equal to u by e. So, now we can rewrite the equation which we have written here as p 1 minus p 2 is equal to k into mu into u into l by e into d s square. So, here d s is defined as the grain diameter of the porous media. So, O we can write this uh, we can divide by gamma and write as uh, h f is equal to h f is p 1 by minus p 2 by gamma. So, h f is equal to k mu u l by gamma e d d s square. So, finally, from this expression we can write the velocity u is equal to h f by l which is the head loss, h f is the head loss, h f by l into gamma into e into d s square by k into mu or from this we can write as this h f by l is the hydraulic gradient that means the head loss with respect to head loss uh, u is equal to h f by l into gamma into e into d s square by k mu or we can write u is equal to k dash into i where i is the i is the hydraulic gradient i is h f by l. So, this expression u is equal to k dash i is known as Darcy's law. So, here k dash is equal to gamma into d s square by k into mu as 
for this expression. So, this is called the coefficient of permeability. So, here what we did is, so we tried to approximate, so we tried to use the equation which we derived for the pipe flow and then uh, between the sand grains we tried to get the, the actual velocity and then we tried, the, we obtained the velocity and then that is the Darcy's law, that is what proved by Darcy through experiment. So, you can see that this Darcy's law is applicable up to a Reynolds number generally equal to 1 where Reynolds number is here is defined as u d s by nu, where d s is the grain diameter and nu is the aromatic coefficient of viscosity. So, as we have seen here, so this ground water flow is also an, is an, as an approximation of the creeping flow theory which we have seen. So, the Gavin equations, so here also the Gavin equations we can start from the uh, Navier-Stokes equation and then uh, put forward the various assumptions and then we can simplify the equation and then we can try to get solutions. So, the, uh, through the simplification of the nebulous stokes equation say for example, for if you consider steady state porous media flow homo in the homogeneous isotropic porous media, the given equation is Laplace equation we can write from the nebulous stokes equation we can derive this form of the equation that square h is equal to 0 which is the Laplace equation where h is the head of the or the water table height for the problem considered. So, like this uh, we can also start from the nebulous stokes equation and then try to get solution. So, as, as I mentioned uh, this porous media flow is also very complex type of flow problem. So, this also uh, here also we can use the nebulous stokes equation. So, as this slide shows say for example, here uh, this slide shows the, the flow through the fiber web structure which can be considered as the porous media flow. So, here the velocity field is um, also marked and then you can see that um, here also path lines are also marked. So, this kind of so the porous media flow as we can see here is so complex, but still we can use the nebulous stokes equation and then approximate and uh, we can try to get for simplified cases like uh, flow through steady state flow through homogeneous isotropic media. So, we can try to get solutions. So, this flow through porous media also has got number of applications like we have already seen the aquifer studies, then contaminant transport studies and the filter design, and gas coolant system design, geological flow simulations, groundwater remediation studies, oil exploration studies etcetera. A number of applications are there for porous media flow. So, this is actually say related to the groundwater flow where uh, course on groundwater flow can be discussed in detail, but here as a part of so uh, the aim of this discussion is we start from the nebulous stokes equation also we can get uh, the simplified equation for the porous media flow and then for simple cases like um, say um, the um, steady state flow through homogeneous isotropic media we can try to get solution. So, uh, like this uh, various kinds of flow problems can be attempted, can be solved using the nebulous stokes equation. So, to summarize this uh, chapter, so here so the nebulous stokes equations, so derivation and exact solutions and solution, the numerical solutions we have seen. So, to summarize, so uh, viscous flow, most of the flows, uh, flow problems which we consider in practical cases or real life is viscous flows. So, we have to consider the viscosity in nature, it can be Newtonian or non-Newtonian non depending upon the problem. So, um, for Newtonian problems, this um, viscous flow problems, we have derived the Navier-Stokes equations. So, um, this Navier-Stokes equation is a general form of the viscous fluid flow equations. We can solve most of the problems with respect to the Navier-Stokes equations including the turbulent flow problems or even the compressible fluid flow by appropriately modifying the Gavion equations. So, these equations are applicable to most of the fluid flow problem, but um, due to the nonlinear and the second order nature of the equations, only few analytical solutions only for simplified problems uh, analytical solutions are available, uh, but most of the real field or real life problems, we cannot use the analytical solutions. So, to use the navier stokes equation, we have to go for numerical methods and numerical solutions as we discussed. So, these numerical methods or numerical solutions of the navier stokes equations, which we generally call as computational fluid dynamics CFD, we can solve most of the 
problems uh, by using the Navier-Stokes equations. So, this is uh, the end of this Navier-Stokes equation chapter. So, the next section we will be discussing about the uh, boundary layer flow and uh, its Gabon equations and uh, various solutions.